You open up your newspaper one day and are shocked to read the headline, Superman Kills 30. Quickly scanning the article, you are shocked to discover that no, this wasn't some accident that took place during the course of some superpowered fight against a villain, but rather that this was a deliberate act of mass murder. Then the next day, there's a news report on the TV. Superman has struck again, this time killing another 20 people. An icy hand of fear clutches your heart as you realize that something must be done, but what exactly could anyone do? Welcome to another episode of the Infographics Show. Today we're asking the question, what if Superman was a serial killer? First we're going to discuss ways Superman could kill using each of his available powers. Then we'll discuss how Superman may be brought to justice by our modern technology. No cheating with kryptonite lasers or anything of the sort, but rather we'll just be exploring the question, can Superman be realistically stopped? If Superman was a serial killer, he'd definitely have a variety of powers to choose from with which to perpetrate his mass murders. We're assuming of course that Superman would be a bit more, well, super than the garden variety serial killer. Why go for a body count of one or two at a time, when you can shuffle dozens of souls off this mortal coil at the same time? So just how could Superman achieve some high kill ratios with each of his powers? Today's forecast? Windy with a chance of death. One of Superman's iconic powers is its incredible lungs, which lets him do everything from holding his breath for hours to shooting blasts of high speed or even super chilled wind. With such powerful lungs, how might Superman look to use them for mass murder? First is the most obvious solution, Superman could just cruise around the city looking for people to fusro da into oblivion like some wayward dragonborn. While it would admittedly be absolutely hilarious to see people ragdolled halfway across the city, it would be devastating for anyone caught in Superman's super air blasts. But why blow when you can suck? As has been shown numerous times, Superman can inhale huge quantities of air, far in excess of what his actual lung capacity should be able to hold. Instead of shouting people to death, Superman could simply fly into densely crowded spaces, such as a subway or an office building and suck all the air out of the room. This would only work in a limited area though. In a small enough space, the vacuum Superman creates would instantly shred the lungs of anyone caught inside it. Even when the air rushes back in, this would lead to pretty quick asphyxiation, as people's shredded lungs are unable to transfer any oxygen into the bloodstream. But Superman's breath can also chill, though the laws of physics have a thing or two to say about that since high-speed air would actually heat up to incredible temperatures. However, we're going to stick with Cannon and just say that his breath freezes. You can leave your complaints to Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster in the comments section below. With his super chill breath, Superman could score a pretty amazingly high kill count if he used it at the right place. The Three Gorges Dam, for example, is the world's largest dam that spans the length of the Yangtze River in China. Notorious for its devastating floods, the Yangtze has killed hundreds of thousands throughout history and is widely considered one of the most dangerous rivers in the world. Yet, the Three Gorges Dam helped tame this deadly river and bring power to millions. But if the dam ever failed, the resulting flood is estimated to kill millions of helpless Chinese who reside in the lowland areas that the river frequently flooded. The dam is capable of killing so many people that US military war planners have debated targeting the dam with airstrikes in the case of war, as the resulting casualties might be the equivalent of having used a weapon of mass destruction. For Superman, this presents an amazing opportunity to score some super kill counts. With his icy breath, Superman could freeze the top of the Yangtze which is backed up by the dam, adding millions of tons of weight pushing down on the dam as the frozen water is prevented from flowing past the giant turbines. When it eventually fails, the torrent of water will wash millions of Chinese to an early grave. The sky is falling. Superman's most obvious superpower is his super strength and with so much strength, there's very little soups couldn't do to mass murder a bunch of people. Sure, he could just fly up and rip an airplane out of the sky, then hurl the airplane into a cruise ship full of people for double bonus points, but that's a lot of work for relatively small body counts. To really score high on the victim kill meter, Superman needs to turn to physics and take a brief trip into space. On the 30th of June 1908, the Tunguska Forest in Russia was flattened in an area the size of Washington DC. 
while modern conspiracy theorists claim that the explosion was a result of secret Nikola Tesla weapons or some other such nonsense. The likely culprit was an airburst of an asteroid or a comet between 200 and 620 feet in diameter. While the explosion is not thought to have killed any humans, it did absolutely flatten 770 square miles of forest. The Tunguska asteroid was not very big in astronomical standards, and it's well known that even larger asteroids and comets regularly whiz by the Earth. Yet even this shrimpy asteroid managed to release an energy equivalent of 10 to 15 megatons of TNT. Superman could take a page from history and simply fly up into space, turn the Earth into his own personal skeet range, and simply bombard every major city center with asteroids. Such an attack over Washington DC today would instantly kill over 700,000 people, and old soups would be able to periodically send fiery rocks of death at every population center with complete impunity. But as much fun as turning the Earth into his personal bowling alley would be, Superman could do something far worse for all life on Earth. In one comic, Superman and Wonder Woman are shown lifting the specter, a being that weighs as much as all the conscious thoughts in all creation, which is a lot. That means that moving an object such as the moon would be well within the bounds of what Superman is capable of. Moving the moon a bit closer to the Earth would have devastating effects not seen since many hundreds of millions of years ago. Every year, the moon moves about 1.6 inches away from the Earth. But hundreds of millions of years ago, the moon was so close to the Earth that the force of its gravity created incredible tidal effects, making waves that reached up hundreds of feet and would travel hundreds of miles inland. Because the moon was far closer to the Earth, it also orbited the planet quicker, meaning that if Superman replaced the moon back to its baby orbit around the Earth, we would be scoured by titanic waves every eight hours or so. Drive by Death Another of Superman's most iconic powers is his super speed. At times he's shown being as fast as the Flash himself, other times not. For the sake of simplicity and because comic book writers literally have no sense of continuity, we're just going to assume that Superman's top speed is the same as the Flash's in Justice League of America number 48. In that issue, the Flash rescues a city of half a million people in North Korea from a nuclear detonation after the nuke has already gone off. In less than a second, he's able to grab 500,000 people two at a time and move them 35 miles away. Never mind that he was basically just turning all those people into clouds of mist as their bodies disintegrated from friction against the air they were rushing past. This means that the Flash was moving at about 13 million times the speed of light, or 8 quadrillion 718 trillion 16 billion 177 million miles per hour. So now we've set a top speed for Superman. What if Superman wanted to use his super speed to punch each and every person on the planet's head clean off? With 7.53 billion people on the Earth, Superman could achieve this feat in less than one second. In the span of time it takes you to blink, Superman will have already punched your head off, as well as your mom's and your dad's head off and all your living relatives. But why punch heads off when you can just affect the global climate by running in circles? Moving at such incredible speeds would create so much friction that it would heat the air to temperatures not seen since the Big Bang, which would immediately disintegrate the molecules of all matter around Superman into their most basic elementary particles. Particles that physicists today keep discovering by smashing atoms into each other at the speed of light. Many scientists would be grateful to Superman for the chance to study what matter is really made of. Or they would be if approaching Superman didn't instantly disintegrate them into a bunch of up and down quarks. If Superman went slower though, he could generate massive amounts of heat which would in turn severely upset weather patterns around the world. If he did this in the Arctic, he could save us all the problem of trying to convince some very ignorant politicians that global warming is in fact a real thing by just completely melting the ice caps. A quick trip down to Antarctica and he could melt all the ice there too flooding the world and revealing the ancient cities of Lovecraft's Elder Things and the horrors hidden within. Ok, so that's a lot of ways Superman could become an unstoppable serial killer. Now we move on to the next part of our show, where we ask the question, how could we stop him? The short answer is, we couldn't. Our only real option to stop Superman would be to just kill ourselves before he gets a chance to. Serial killers notoriously prey on the fear and panic of their victims and have historically reacted very poorly when their victims simply weren't afraid or refused to show their fear. If we all simply killed ourselves, not only do we rob Superman of victims, but we would take the joy of serial killing out of him in the same time, turning him from his evil ways. Sadly, there'd be nobody left to witness the newer, kinder Superman because we'd all be dead. 
But if that's too fatalistic for you, then sure, we suppose that you could try nuclear weapons. Though, as has often been shown, they have little if any effect on Superman. Remember, this is a superhero so powerful that its creators had to invent an entire alien crystal just to write stories that have any drama in them at all. Without the invention of kryptonite, every Superman comic would just be Superman meets villain, Superman punches villain into outer space. Those would be no fun to read. Although we would absolutely watch a feature-length movie of nothing but Superman punching random people into space, Hollywood, if you're watching, take note. Short of kryptonite or magic, another of Superman's weaknesses, we simply couldn't do anything to stop the rampaging, serial-murdering Superman. At least not with our real-world technology. Which brings us back to our original plan, everybody just kill themselves. We can defeat Superman by simply beating him to the punch. But short of that, there's no stopping the big blue Boy Scout. What other ways could Superman turn to mass murder? How could we really stop him? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video, Superman vs. The Predator, Who Would Win? Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.